Oh, I can't wait to see you. Let's come out that cake. All right, everybody, let's get this thing rolling again. I didn't mean to do it. You chose the toast Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at the May meeting, the board asked me to begin the preparations of an amended draft alcohol ordinance. Um, I have given everybody a draft, an updated draft of that ordinance. Just want to go over it with the board, see any comments, suggestions, changes that you would like to make. There have been discussion at the May meeting, uh, or the June meeting, I'm sorry, uh, to discuss uh, this at the July workshop, make any changes, discuss any issues that the board may have, uh, and then uh, and then potentially uh, put it uh, for public hearing and potential approval as early as August. So it will not be heard, it has not been advertised for next Thursday's meeting, so if you're a member of the public, it's next Thursday's not the public hearing, it would be in August is when we would do that. Uh, so to give you premise, we, we began discussing this a couple years ago and uh, some changes have been made to what we began discussing a couple of years ago. One consistent drumbeat uh, that uh, I heard from this board and members of the community was to try to create an ordinance wherein uh, we keep the culture of Washington County in place, uh, we keep the ideals and objectives of Washington County in place, but at the same time balance that with making sure that we set ourselves up for the type of growth and the type of businesses that we want to come into the county. With that being mind, uh, I looked at probably a dozen other counties throughout the state of Florida, uh, their ordinances, and, and kind of saw some things other people did and, and tried to implement some of those here. And so, I kind of want to go over the, 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 the key things that you will see and you will hear in this ordinance. Specifically, I want to start in Section 3 and Section 4. Section 3 uh, deals specifically with uh, the distance requirement with respect to churches. Currently, um, and this was done many, 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 many decades ago in Washington County, uh, we have a 2,000 foot setback uh, from any church or dwelling. Uh, well, I'm going to get the dwelling in a second, so I'm going to focus on church. That church setback was set back in April of 1973. So you're talking 43, 44 years ago, there was a distance requirement uh, for churches. Uh, that still exists today. It's my understanding that, in contrast, the city of Chipley currently as restrictive as their ordinance is would be a thousand feet for churches and so your restriction for churches in the unincorporated area is greater than what the city's currently is um, that being said uh, there's been a lot of banter with how to deal with that uh, historical setback requirement here is the proposed language that I've got that I would I would like you to consider <coughs> It says the sale of beer, wine, or other alcoholic or intoxicating beverages, and that's uh, a, a historical thing. Again, we'll say liquor, and that's a that's a that's a different uh, different topic for a different day. We uh, we are currently we have to get through a referendum process to get uh, alcoholic beverages that have a uh, percentage of alcohol. I think it's a little bit greater than six percent. Uh, we would have to go through a referendum process. That's for a different day, so please don't confuse what I'm talking about here. I'm, I'm talking uh, more like typical what you would see beer is really what I'm talking about here. So the, 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 the uh, beverages with a higher percentage of alcoholic content is, is another topic for another day that would have to be passed by referendum. But for purposes of what we're talking about today, the sale of beer, wine, or other alcoholic or intoxicating beverages for consumption on the premises. Again, this is consumption on the premises. This is not a package situation. This is consumption on the premises, which is important. It is permitted to be sold by a vendor licensed by the Division of Alcoholic Beverages. That's the state licensing board. An area designated for commercial land use. So that's another requirement and is specified in the Washington County Land Development Code. All right, so um, 
Then we get in distances from churches. No beer, wine, or other alcoholic beverages may be sold for consumption on the premises within 500 feet of any church, which distance shall be measured by following the shortest route of ordinary pedestrian travel on the public thoroughfare from the front door of the place of business to the front door of the church. One thing to notice about the distance requirement is there is no specific ordinance that I can find in Washington County where it talks about a setback from a, a school. That's a statutory distance requirement, and that statutory distance requirement is 500 feet. So I basically implemented the statutory distance requirement for schools, and I implemented that uh, distance requirement with respect to churches. There is a qualifier that I want you to understand and digest, though. So issue one is I've limited 2,000 to 500 feet. And the 500, if anybody wants to know where that number is or whether it's arbitrary, that is the statutory setback in statute for schools. Uh, the aforementioned distance requirement regarding the distance from churches shall not apply to restaurants. And so there is an exception to go closer than 500 feet for restaurants. Restaurants shall be defined for the purpose of this section as an establishment that meets the requirements of Florida Statute 509013 and to the extent where more restrictive than 509013 where meals are prepared where meals or prepared food, including beverages and confections, are served to customers for consumption um, off the, on the premises, an establishment engaged primarily in the service of food and non-alcoholic beverages whose revenues derived from the sale of prepared food exceed 50% of its revenues. A restaurant must have full kitchen facilities and food prepare, preparation staff capable of preparing and serving full course meals during all hours of operation. A restaurant must have the appropriate license issued by the state as well as all county permits required by law and must meet all local zoning requirements for restaurant. The term may, may include, it doesn't necessarily shall include, it may include cafes, coffee shops, donut shops, delicatessens, cafeterias, and other establishments of a similar nature. So a couple things I just want you to be aware of that, that we're trying to do. One is we are uh, amending the de facto distances from churches to get more in line with what the statutory requirement is for schools. So that is one thing I want you to be aware of, and you need to be cognizant of that. The second thing is, is we are creating an exception within that distance requirement for, for the type of businesses that I think that this board is trying to attract, which are restaurants in nature, your Applebee's, your Beef O'Brady's, those type of restaurants. And so that is the concept behind section three. Obviously it says draft on it and that can be discussed, but that's the parameters by which I'm trying to play. Section four deals with residences. Um, it, same thing for residences. We have reduced the residence requirement to 500 to give the board an idea of what it currently has. Uh, with respect to residences, it cannot be sold for consumption on premises within 500 feet of any residence. It may be sold between 500 and 1,000 if the property owners consent in writing. So we have basically taken the residence requirement and made it aligned with the church requirement of 500 feet of any residence and then basically established the same exception to the rule for restaurants. Um, the restrictions contained in three and four uh, will not affect any existing business. So if there's a grandfather business that is in the zone, it will not affect that in section five. Uh, and really we, section six, seven, eight, uh, and nine are basically just making sure that everybody is clear that some other ordinances affecting things like bottle clubs and schools uh, shall remain, uh, shall remain in, in effect. Um, it also, in Section 6, says no certificate of use or occupancy, building, plumbing, electrical, or other permits uh, shall be issued to any person, firm, association, and corporation, etc. Uh, operating a business for the sale of alcoholic all beverages at a location prohibited. So I've even given some teeth in there that we're not issuing permits, licenses, etc. unless you comply with this ordinance. But the important thing that you need to digest and need to be discussed today are understanding the setback requirements that are in this ordinance, where they came from, and demanding them if you would like to. But the concept is we're gonna have a setback requirement of 500 feet for churches, uh, 500 feet for um, residences. Schools are already in place by statute at 500 feet. 
we are going to make an exception to the uh, residence and church requirement if that business is a restaurant. And so I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have, uh, but that is the concept behind the ordinance. Just for clarification purposes and, and for everyone, in, this will eliminate any bar, standalone bar atmosphere in Washington County. Well, if you're grandfathered in, you're grandfathered well, in. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, for the future. The, 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 the restaurant, well, I, a future, it's hard for me to. It's, well, it's, what I'm getting at, they'll have to serve 50%. Yeah, the, 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 the restaurant requirement that's yeah. included in the ordinance would dictate that you would need to serve food for serve food, food to, be with, yeah. to, to, be, to be within the setback requirement. That's yes. right. That was my point. So the only way you could have one is if you have a full restaurant. Because I know that's what people were hung up on, that we're going to open this up and you'll have a bar on every corner. This is not the ordinance that we're putting in place. This ordinance, this ordinance to attract the business that we want on our core identity. We're we're trying to talk target restaurants in the ordinance, and that's why we're giving a kind of an exception to the setback requirement for restaurants. So we're still not addressing um, convenience stores and none of that same. Not in this ordinance. This this is first. This, this is on site consumption. On -site. Well, I mean, but I'm, I guess what I'm looking at is down the set of the South I-10 corridor. I mean, it's, what we got in place now would still stop over the truck stop from coming in. Right. There's nothing that we have in place that would stop the truck stop from coming in as far as I know. Well, the setbacks on this. Well, I mean, if they if they want to sell beer over there, aren't they close enough to Blue Lake that they couldn't? A truck stop. But the, any convenience store. Well, I, I okay. Uh, like a Publix? This is for consumption. Yeah, we're, I, I mean, I understand that. Yeah, but I'm, sure. just, I'm just, I mean, we're addressing one, I know, and I'm trying to, I'm kind of changing the subject just to grow up, but I just, I was just curious. I, I see where Michigan's coming from. Uh, maybe something we want to add to it is, uh, like for right, right now, you can't serve, you can't sell beer by the can within 2,000 foot. So we may have to, have, have to add the off premise consumption, or off premise consumption into this as well, so we could sell. They could, they could set up a truck stop or a convenience store or whatever nature. Well, uh, here's the problem with a truck stop or a convenience store. Your, your restaurant requirements going out the window. Mm -hmm. I, I, that truck stops, gross revenue is not going to be 50% from the sale of food. No, 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 no. no th th this ordinance is great for that, for yeah. on-site consumption. Th this is a perfect written ordinance yeah. for that, for what I wanted to accomplish on that aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I mean, Ma Maybe the, uh, we need to have another ordinance for off-site consumption. You would have to. I mean, if there if there are restrictions with respect to the distance requirements, the 2,000 feet, you would need to either remove or reduce. We've reduced it here to 500 feet. That's on exactly. Side, so you would have you could do something consistent with that. Well, that's all we need to do for that that ordinance is to amend that in, in retrospect to that. I'm ordinance. just because with the sewer and water going south of the interstate, all in one fell swoop is what you're talking. Stood at the same. Well, I, yeah, and I'm just trying to figure out how because. I mean, if a love truck stop wanted to come on that property south of the interstate, they couldn't do it right now. It's my understanding. I mean, if you tell me no, if I'm wrong. You're, you're absolutely right. But I like I like because how, of the I, church I, issue. Yeah, the that's, issue. that's just like on Sunday. <laughs> but right? no, 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 no. I love. I like how this is. I, I like how you done this. That, that, I, I'd say we leave this one like it is, and then no, no, and then amend our current ordinance I get to. It. To our 500 foot setback for off site. So you're, you want your off site setback requirement to be 500 feet in line with the board of That's exactly without right. the restaurant requirement. Yeah, so, so we keep the restaurant quarantine for the. I mean, we're, we're trying to bring in business, and I'm tired of not being able to buy gas when I got my cattle trailer because I can't find nowhere to pull into, and Steve has to drive to another county to get his when he's working. I mean, we need, just need the ability to do that. <laughs> Watch y'all try to buy for your cattle, brother. You can't. You, there's nowhere you can pull into. I, I completely understand. But, Jeff, do you, you see what he's saying? It's the same ordinance, and it's written the same way as on sale and off, off site. Yeah. But I don't want to get that confused, and somehow or another we, we uh, muddle the water to this because this, this is the perfect ordinance that you read for what we're trying to do. I, I think it's great, and I just want to make sure, but I mean, I think we're only we're only fixing half the problem. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I uh, well, this is good catch, Charles. But I but I like how this is done. I, 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 I agree with that one. I'm good. The way it's worded, 
is you can have an establishment that sells beer for consumption on premise as long as it's not within 500 feet of the church. Okay. However, a if it's a restaurant, then you can go within the 500 feet. That's exactly right. Yes, sir. Right. All right. Because I'm hearing two different stories here <clears throat> as to where they're interpreting this. And that's good that, uh, that y'all are thinking about this. But I just want to make sure, because I heard one say, well, we can't have a bar. Well, it's not excluding a bar. Mm -hmm. Excluding a bar within 500 feet of the church. But you have a bar outside of 500 feet of the church. Your, your, just the restaurant is the only one that qualifies to come within the 500 feet. If the bar could go 2,000 feet today, it would be able to go 501 feet after this ordinance. Right. If that makes sense. The only thing that, the only other mm -hmm. language I might would consider putting in here would be, say, like a Cabot Lodge or a Holiday Inn or a Kenta. Some of those that have happy hour. a happy hour. They're not a restaurant. They serve wine and cookies. And I don't know hour. where that falls. You know what I mean? Okay. They are serving on premise. Most of them don't charge. Or, or make 50% of their profit from some of their source then from, from selling their room. Yeah, I mean, but you know what I'm saying? But if someone wanted to put it, say right there at the corner where the junior store is or whatever that used to be, the ice cream the shell station. Mm -hmm. I uh, not know about the hotel this year. Sir. But, uh, but that's, that's, I mean, they would be, they would be excluded because they're not in restaurants. They just have a lobby. And it would encourage the nicer in hotels too. I don't, I don't see where, if I'm reading this correctly, uh, in order to sell any alcoholic beverage for on-site consumption, you have to have 50% of your revenues coming from some other no, source. Um, that's not how I'm reading it. You're only going to qualify here, here, as a restaurant. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your current ordinance and go from 2,000 to 500, mm -hmm. period. All the way around. Which period. Is a good, good thing. You can go inside of 500 if you are a restaurant. Right. Right. But we're, I can't tell you that a bar can't come today as long as it's 2,001 feet from a church or five or 1,001 feet from a residence. So there is no restriction on, quote, bars. Basically, what you did is you took your distance requirement and you went from 2,000 to 500 and you gave an exception within 500. That's what this is. Right. If you want something different, we'll amend the proposed ordinance. But that's what this is. We you went took from 2,000 to 500 and we went from 1,000 to 500. And then we stay with the. We're basically taking everything down to 500. Because statutes don't address churches and residences, all they address is schools. Yes, school. So we're just treating everything the same way that you would treat a school. That, okay. that was the concept behind the ordinance. Okay. Well, uh, well, I'm a little worried. Then uh, I, I've misinterpreted this entirely. Uh, on the on, on Ebro, in that area, when Mike Thomas shuts the sales down in Panama City, what's going to prevent them coming north to Ebro? Or is or our twelve o'clock? We got twelve o'clock curfew. Midnight. Midnight. Midnight seven. That's what I'm worried about. I don't want to bring that. I don't want to bring that crowd north because if you don't think they will drive 18 miles to keep party, sure, we, we were sadly mistaken. So I want to. Is that how you do it, Trent? Uh, when I was that age, ain't no doubt in my mind. Uh, you know, but I knew right, and they never want to appear on this panel can say it. So say, one, one, one way to deal with that would be to ex <laughs> you could you could extend. I mean, you always could change the 500 feet and extend it closer to 2,000, which is what you have. I don't want that. But you're giving more protection to those establishments than your schools with your children. I know, no, no. I don't, I don't, the, the 500 feet is what I'm looking for, but I thought the 50% retail sales would, other than spirits, would protect us from the bar. But we don't have that covered in the hours of operation. Yeah, it was 7-12. You're, you're, That's what I mean. Yeah. So you're already, you know, in, in Panama, you're at 2 or 4? Yeah. Yeah. What? So, or Bay County? We quit on sign consumption at midnight. I mean, the only way we would catch them is when. How does that affect? We would be reopening whenever they. <laughs> they call well, out. Catch the morning. How does that affect Ebro? Um, Municipality would have to adopt ours for the effect Ebro. Okay. Well, if we're, we're home, we'll take care of that. Okay. Well, well, I, I know they stay open. Lord, I went fishing them at three o'clock, and there were still tons of people out here. But other than your setback requirements, there's nothing prohibiting a bar from coming. I mean, there's nothing prohibiting that from coming today. So there's, I mean, there is nothing in place that would prohibit.
prohibit that right now other than these setback requirements. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just continue yes. about how I read it. But, well, see, and then, but that brings up the five hundred. I was going to say, if you did a thousand and then go under the thousand with the restaurant, but then you're protecting them more than you are the kids, so. Yeah, I, I may agree with all that. I don't have no problem with it. I just want to make sure everybody understood what we were talking about. Yeah, you're treating, you would be treating, you would be treating churches and residents like schools, except for you would allow them even closer than 500 if they were restaurants. And hunt some language for off site consumption? No, uh, for, uh, for your hotels. Okay, yeah, I not follow that. And I don't, know, I don't know how you word that. I mean, Somebody that, saw that basically, that doesn't even, that won't even touch. Hotels, they yeah. don't even sell it. But even if they did, somehow or another, somehow you can't. You well, can't. Huh? Yeah, some of them do. Some of the big ones. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of them have those little refrigerators and like little stores that you buy. I'll find some hotel yeah. language and bring it back to the door next Thursday. See if there's something I can find. It's, it's, like, it's like they're maybe even exclude hotels. <coughs> okay. Somehow. Yeah, I'll find something. Because it's like I mean that's it's it's not quite res residential, but it's at the same time <coughs> it's their property. You know. I don't want to restrict what they can do yeah, I don't within their problem. And a lot of them do that happy hour. I would like to encourage, I mean, yes, they, they do. I mean, when you go off uh, any meeting and stuff, I mean, in the, the nicer motels, I mean, you, they do. In motels, they, they have, a, you know, fresh baked cookies and a free glass of wine. Yeah. All the salespeople Some of them have a, you can eat there. Yeah, they, yeah. All, all the salespeople I've ever dealt with in Panama are dozen, and they route themselves accordingly, and they come see us in the morning and somewhere else in the evening because they ain't staying there. Okay. I'll bring that language and I will also review our off site consumption and go over that with you Thursday. But are we okay with the direction we're going with the on site consumption other than the hotel issue? I think so. Okay. All right. So the next thing that I will cover is the uh, coal easement. I'm going to jump the next ordinance come back to it. The coal easement, if the, this is a continuation of something that the board dealt with maybe two months ago. If you'll remember, there was a nice gentleman. He was a commissioner from Okaloosa County, maybe, and his son came. Mm -hmm. um, I drafted a very limited easement to protect us uh, from an expanded easement, so to speak. I did not allow for, I did not speci specify in the easement that electric electricity could be run through that easement. So Gulf Power has requested that we approve the easement that you have in front of you. It's for the same parcel, the same easement. It would allow Gulf Power to access his property so he could get utilities back there. That's what that is. So it's the same, it's just an expansion of the current easement that we passed a couple months ago. I think we can put that on the consent. The Choctahatchee Bay Estuary Liaison. Uh, I brought to you that in June, but uh, did not know that they were meeting so soon, and so we did not get a liaison named. I know that Mr. Bush uh, politely attended the uh, meeting last week, uh, or earlier this week, I think it was last week. It was Monday. Monday, I think it was last week. And, uh, but I, the board needs to go ahead and formally appoint uh, a, a representative to that uh, board Again, Mr. Bush has already attended the first meeting, so he's cognizant and aware of what's going on over there. Are you good with that? I think we should assign him to the next one, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. The only thing is, you really need an alderman, and I would probably name Trey as the alderman just simply because his district is the other district the border's talking he, he, He's closer to this camp. Well, and that's true, too, because they hold their meetings over that way, in the Feeniac and elsewhere. Yeah. But it's, it's really good, and maybe sometime when we have a little bit of time, uh, and kind of show you what what the ultimate objective is of this board is to. Right now, they're putting together an application to apply for two million dollars worth of a grant, no match, uh, that would will come out of the pot two restore monies, and uh, that's basically to come up and develop a comprehensive plan. Uh, to look at different ways you could improve the Hedge Bay Estuary, which <coughs> paving dirt roads, 
a number of different programs anyways. I wasn't aware that there were so many of these uh, groups all over the state, but uh, it, it, it's really a, a pretty good meeting, and in, in that meeting, you've got a member from the four counties involved, Oak Lucy, Walton, Holmes, and Washington. And then the fifth person that was elected to the board is the director of the Choctaw Bay Estuary Coalition, which is a good neutral party. Sure. I figure you got all the counties going to fight for themselves, and you got one person that's going to look out for the best interest of the program. So it should. Uh, it's going. It's going to be an interesting group. Probably a bunch of traveling in it, but you know how it is. And they got those, those, some of those other counties have additional zeros in their ad valorem tax system we do so yeah, yeah. we can give in kind services yeah i fight to, i fight to have a, a supply closet as an yes. office back here and i went by sarah commander's house which is an office yeah i mean it's she's got a house yeah. that was somebody's residence and now it's her office back behind them oh, really? and i'm like boy how could you fight for that <laughs> did you catch that <laughs> Did you catch that for the consent? Name it, Alan. Alan is in back there. Right. <laughs> One thing I want other assistants, you can appoint Charles. <laughs> yeah. One thing I want to address with the board really quick, just to make sure we're on the same page and, and it can be discussed today and we can continue to discuss it next Thursday. But when we bring the ordinance for public reading on the franchise fees, what percentage is the board wanting inserted in that ordinance because I heard some various thoughts on that earlier today so you know as far as, vote? As, far, no, as, far as the percentage so your franchise fee is based on a percentage and I've seen them anywhere from two and three percent up to six percent what's the maximum I have not seen any higher than six percent the ones I've looked at so most of them are five and six percent the ones I've looked at six percent so I just want to make sure that whatever you're desiring to the franchise fee to be, that that's exactly what's in there. So I can I can do the legal lead, but I don't see want to start percentage. I mean, you, the, the more the percentage, the more money. But I, I mean, I don't want to go crazy with it. I mean, I'm not to be in the four or five. Uh, what do you think, Trey? Hey, y'all already got me out on limb. Hey, I brought up recent status meeting, and now I'm sitting raising taxes. No, I'd say five percent for sure. Okay. At least five. You want me to bring it back, or do you want me to go ahead and insert five? I mean, the public hearing is not until August, but if that's what you want, I'll go ahead and insert that. Sure. You want none? Right. Okay. Is that you, buddy? You're struggling. Trey, what precinct are you trying to close? <laughs> I'll, I'll insert five. Everything, Mr. Jordan, district. I'm close. Hey, Todd, he's already studied all that. He knows what precincts are going to have the most vote against the uh, alcohol. Yeah. So he shut down all the church precincts. <laughs> I heard it. 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 You a catch her out. <laughs> all right. The last thing is. Your first public hearing. Y'all switch off to me. The, the last thing I just want to discuss with you is this marijuana uh, ordinance. Which man we're just talking today. We've got alcohol, franchise fees, and marijuana all in one meeting. <laughs> Welcome to the summer. Um, so we've discussed this a couple times. Brandy brought it before you. I made some changes in, in some modifications to the ordinance that she brought and proposed last month. I think you've got a couple of options. Um, I think I think we have the ability, based on looking at what some other counties have done, we probably could extend the moratorium up to about another 90 or 120 days if you so choose to do that some counties have extended theirs not anything past 120 um, or the board can go ahead and begin to, or pass what you have in place again i don't know if anything's going to come sooner rather than later but this will allow you to regulate those have an application process have what i would call a subcommittee in place which will rank the applicants and put some sort of limitations on how these dispensing agencies exist and operate in our county. And so really I think that the, the, the question for the board right now is do you want to try to extend your moratorium by 90 days or do you want to go ahead and, and are you prepared to pass something is the one we've discussed on two occasions now where basically you have a, I would compare it almost to an RFP process where you have to jump several hoops and then you apply through a quasi RFP process 
Jeff and his appointed team, whoever that may be, per the ordinance, would rank, score, and rank those. And once that window opens and the number of permits are given that we're going to give, uh, that window would not open again for a period of time. And so it basically opens a window periodically based on the number you're going to have in your county. Um, that's the concept behind it, is to have a scoring system where the most qualified people who have jumped through the hoops are the ones who get it. Um, this is similar to what other counties have passed and is structured based on what other counties have passed. But there was a question that came up last time about extending the moratorium, and I looked at that issue, and a couple of counties have done that, not for a year period of time, but for 90 and 120 days, just to give some more time to see how this is going to play out. You know, legislatively, is, is, uh, it's, I guess what is done is done, but now it's, it's time to see how that plays out and is challenged in court. And so really, I think the options are to pass something like this and amend it as you go if it doesn't suffice. Option two is to go ahead and extend the moratorium for 90 days or 120 days towards the end of the year and readdress it then. We got to go through the public meeting process and all that good stuff, right? It's an ordinance, yes. I'd so, like to. I'd like to personally extend it another 20 days. 120 give, days. Give us a little more time. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Let's get. And, and there may be more action that's taking place. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there, there's, uh, there is. I would like to see what more counties are doing than have done. I mean, there's, it's still up in limbo. And there's a, there's a lot of activity going on in that right now. And I, I think they're there going is. to drive a lot of the problems. That so what we will do is I will create uh, an extension of the current moratorium, uh, bring that back to you, and extend that moratorium for 120 days. I will tell you after 120 days, it's probably going to be difficult to extend it much further. No, I don't, I don't. No, no, I mean, are y'all with that? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think they're trying to just cross one hurdle at a time. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was in the hurdle jumping mode. Uh, yeah, we, we spoke about the alcohol ordinance and, and other things. Uh, uh, undoubtedly, Washington County will sales of that sort of item will probably increase here in the near future. And we're looking at revenues and revenue streams. Uh, a tax that's specifically purposed to the, the sale of alcohol. Got to be careful with your, those type of taxes. Uh, I know, but uh, that's my question to you as an attorney. I've seen other towns and municipalities have a, what they call a quote unquote sin tax. Sure. Um, I think you are very aware of how this board feels about trying to get rid of the Apple Water. Get, well, get out from the Apple Water Crunch. I will tell you from a state statutory standpoint, when you will use the word tax, you were preempted. Yeah. And so the state, from a taxation standpoint, basically says counties, you can have ad valorem taxes, and they give us a discretionary small county surtax. What is it, Risha? About one and a half cents. Is that what our discretionary is? I don't know right now. All right. I think it is. But anyway, you are preempted somewhat by the, 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 the term tax. So we need to be careful there. Well, yeah, but I see other, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not, we're not the first county to ever discuss this nor do this. Yeah. But if there's a way to do it, I'd definitely like for us to look I, at I would like, That's as many as the commissioner speaking. I, you know, I, I will, will research. I mean, what the, 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 basically the same tax. Yeah, which which <laughs> We just follow gossip. out and around throughout the day, yeah. and whatever he picks up and does, we're going to put a tax Can we get a gossip tax? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but what I'm getting at is... It here's, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I will look at it. I encourage you to, Mr. Hawkins, if you see it that tax from another county that you like, let me know. But I've looked at this issue in the past, and I've... We are, if we could tax what we wanted to, how we wanted to, when we wanted to, we would, we would. Well, well I, I agree with it, but I did. I didn't want to bring it up to you in person. I felt like we make get the consensus of the board if they would like to see us move forward. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time if there's something that the board is not going to be receptive to. It, 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 I, if they, if there's a way to tax that specific commodity, which commodity? The alcohol sales. Uh, I think you're, you're doing alcohol. You're, you are limited in your ability to, okay, to well, tax. Okay. Otherwise, we would just tax. You would you say we're going to implement another three cent tax on this to generate. I mean, trust me, it's well. I just know that basically see. the state says you can tax add, you add more property taxes, and you've got up to one and a half or two cents, you know, is the di uh, on it's different gas. things, but not gas. Forget gas. Yeah. Yeah. Gas right. is separate. That's LOGT, right? That's right. So just a general gas. tax. You right. can't go in and say every every state that sold it published, we're going to put a four cent tax on it. 
and so you, the state is responsible for sales tax, so to speak, and they give you a little bit of discretion in what you can do locally as far as sales tax goes. Okay, well, so we'll look at that and see if there's a creative way we can benefit financially from doing something. I don't want to necessarily call it a tax at this point. Well, yeah, I, I've read article for it and the keys they did. It. That's when I knew there was a place where I read they did that specific tax, and it. Help the so we'll look at it, but I just don't want, like I said, don't want to spend a whole lot of time wasting. It's kind of like the franchise fees versus the tax, or MSBU assessment versus the tax. Sometimes yeah. it's the lingo people use that you got to be careful with. Yeah, well, just whatever we need to do. Yeah. I just want to see, I was asked this like the route we're going to go on the I 10 corridor, and let's get the, let's, let's don't, let's don't get the cart behind the water and bottom plant again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Y'all understand? Not really, but. <coughs> That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, you good? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Have or two of them. <laughs> but you did bring up something I want you to work on there in your budget committee that our traffic in. Yes. Uh, the uh, helping this in this value for their resources. Yep. You uh, I'll bring you a balanced budget, tell you what I took out of it to make it balanced, and then we'll argue about what we put back into it. That's fine. That's fine. I mean I'm good I'm good with putting it in there. I mean I've just but I mean I have just got the that's fine. If you I, I, I just got the list. If, if the children are important, that's fine. They're, they're very important. <laughs> that's why. Well, the reason it hasn't been in there before because it was normally written by some of the jobs. I'm joking with Charles. No, I have no. Um, but I haven't seen all of them. I, I got. I got seen everybody's budget, I'm, but I'm I got the number. I got the number here. Get I mean, that's not an issue. I don't want to buy a couple of pieces. I got a motion. Second. 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 Alan already made the motion.